Hi, this is Debbie and thank you for joining me today as I take a look at the new release from Altenew. This release contains spray inks, large rolls of washi tape and stencils. I've got the new supplies I want to show you and also creating the stencil background cards you see here. So let's crack on and although this video will likely be longer than my normal ones, I'll try not to make it too long. The new release from Altenew contains five wide washi tapes, five spray inks, and I have three of the eight new stencils here too. Let's start with a look at the new spray ink colours. The new spray inks are jet black, pure white, antique gold, antique silver and iridescent. These versatile neutrals and metallics complement the 12 colourful sprays already in the Altenew Mixed Media Arsenal. As with all spray inks, you have to give them a good shake first to ensure all the pigment is fully mixed through the liquid. I squirted the jet black spray ink on white card and vice versa for the pure white spray ink. But with the three metallics, antique gold, antique silver and iridescent, these colours will show up on both lighter and darker cardstock. The iridescent spray ink is an intriguing colour because when viewed straight on, you don't see much of what's going on. But when you catch the light at an angle, you see the beautiful sparkle. So here you have the five new spray ink colours. I can particularly see myself using them to add spritz and splatters to backgrounds and to spray through stencils. Moving along, and next we have a new product range for Altenew, washi tape. Although I've seen narrow rolls of washi tape widely used in the planner and journaling communities, I don't see them used as much in our card making industry. What I find particularly great is the wide format of these rolls of washi tape. I've not seen anything like it before, and it is certainly an exciting addition to the Altenew product range. As you would expect from Altenew, the quality of these washi tapes is top notch. Unlike some pseudo rolls of washi tape I've had in the past, these are the true format of washi tape, being thin, slightly translucent, beautifully illustrated, and with low tack adhesive on the back. The low tack means that you can stick and lift washi tape without damaging the surface you're applying it to, and yet once adhered, it will stay in place. This floral flows washi tape out here is 17.5 centimeters wide by 10 meters long. That is just under seven inches wide by over 32 feet long. As you can see here, the width is slightly greater than a standard A2 card base. However, I can see these beautiful washi tapes being used not only in card making, but also in home decor. Personally, I'm thinking of using them to jazz up some office storage boxes, but I think the possibilities are endless. The Floral Flurries washi tape is the only one currently 17.5 centimetres wide. The next size down is this beautiful monochrome washi tape, and this is 11.5 centimetres wide, which is roughly 4.5 inches. I have to say, the illustrations on these washi tape just speak to my water-loving heart. They are simply stunning. Moving on, and this peach gold is another 11.5 centimetre width washi tape. Again, using a lovely watercolour illustration, and I particularly love to see the granulation in the paint. Granulation is where pigment settles in the nooks and crannies of watercolour paper to give texture, and it's one of the properties of watercolour that I love. This dotted washi tape is the last in the 11.5 centimetre width range, and although it may not be as flamboyant as its neighbours, I think you can't go wrong with a great polka dot, and I can see myself using this design a lot as a nice background. Finally, we have the baby of the family, but having said that, this watercolour strokes washi is still six centimetres in width. That's just over two and a quarter inches. I add three strips of the tape to cover the sample card. So there you have it: the five new white washi tapes, floral flurries, monochrome, peach gold, dotted, and watercolour strokes. And here's a picture just to highlight the beautiful watercolour illustrations. Although I didn't film this card, I used the dotted washi as a background and fussy cut the flowers from the floral flurries. Okay, moving on, and it's the turn of the stencils. There are eight new stencils, and here I have the Deco Wallpaper Stencil, Classy Stripe Stencil, and Leaf Burst Stencil. I'm going to be using the Deco Wallpaper Stencil for my cards today. I like the bold design, which I feel can be used equally for either a masculine or feminine card, simply by changing up the ink colours. The ink colours I'm using are from the latest Altenew ink release. For this card, I'm using Aqualicious, Teal Cave, and then blending into Minty Mint. To get a nice even blend, I started with the Aqualicious ink, and blended that lightly over the lower two-thirds of the panel, 
before lightly blending into Minty Mint. I then deepen the lower third of the panel with Teal Cave before blending back with Aquilicious and finally Minty Mint again. To take this background up a notch, I'm going to lightly spritz it with the iridescent spray ink. Having given it a good shake to ensure the pigment was fully mixed, I then gave a couple of squirts with a sparkly mixture six inches from the panel and then immediately lifted the stencil. I also created a second stencil background panel, again using the Deco wallpaper stencil, but this time I used a gentle gradient of pink inks. I used from lightest to darkest, pink pearl, coral bliss and heartbeat. Again I spritzed the panel with iridescent spray ink to add some sparkly shimmer and interest to the design. I'm going to be keeping the rest of the card simple and use the happy birthday die for the sentiment. I like this die as it gets the message across and its relatively large size means that it can take centre stage. For the blue card I cut the die several times from soft navy card and then spray the dies on the back with an adhesive before mounting them one on top of the other to form a dimensional sentiment. Before gluing the sentiment in place I trim the stencil background down slightly so that it was just slightly smaller than an A2 card. This means that when I mount it on the card base, I get a nice border around the panel. I then add a drainage multimedia matte glue to the back of the sentiment piece and place it on my card. Drainage multimedia matte is a strong adhesive, which means that this sentiment will stay firmly in place. I then add a foam adhesive to the back of the panel and I did it to a white card base I'd cut and scored from Nina Solar White Card in the 110 pound weight. This is a nice sturdy weight to ensure the card doesn't sag and it gives it a nice quality feel too. To finish this card, I dug around in my Nouveau Crystal and Jewel Drops drawer and pulled out a selection of colours that toned. I used two greens, Translucent Key Lime and Bright Apple Green, and two blues, Translucent Sea Breeze and Bright Caribbean Blue. I kept the droplets in a triangle formation to highlight the sentiment. For the pink card, I added a splatter of Antique Gold Spray Ink by shaking the bottle and then using the tube from the bottle to splatter ink on the panel. I then trim the panel down to be slightly smaller than an A2 card base. This time, instead of using foam adhesive to adhere the panel to the card base, I cut a piece of foam foam just slightly smaller than the panel and used Ranger Multimedia Matte to adhere the foam foam to the panel and in turn to the card base. I like that the foam foam covers the whole of the panel and should prevent the panel getting damaged in the mail. I again use the Happy Birthday die for the sentiment for this pink card. This time I cut it from Gold Mirror card and use small pieces of foam adhesive on the back to keep it in place. I use this method rather than layering the die cuts as I think it gives the die cut a lighter, more elegant finish for this feminine card. To embellish this version I used a combination of cosmopolitan sequins held in place with Ranger Multimedia Matte and Bubblegum Blush Nouveau Crystal Drops. So here are the two versions side by side. I'd be interested to know which version you like better if you want to leave a comment below. So this video is drawn to a close now but I hope you've enjoyed looking at the new ultra new release of spray inks, washi and stencils and seeing the creation of these stencil background cards. I'll leave links in the YouTube description below to the products that I've used today and to the coordinating blog post over at langdoodledesign.com where you'll find details and pictures. Also the post there is part of a blog hop with lots of inspiration and the option to join in for a couple of giveaways so please check that post out. I want to thank you for joining me and if you've enjoyed this tutorial I'd be delighted if you subscribe to this channel. Thanks and I'll see you next time.